All right, so um, something we really, really like to focus on here with the Volt is that this is what we call a range extended electric vehicle. This is not a hybrid because even though we do have a gas engine underneath the hood, electricity is all that moves the front wheels, okay? Um, we have two modes of propulsion, either all electric or range extended mode, and we'll cover both of those here today. Um, and we'll first start by talking about the all electric mode, okay? So the reason I open up the car to talk about all electric mode is it's important to signify the path of the battery. Basically we have this very large lithium ion battery pack that starts up at the bulkhead or what we used to call the firewall, travels all through the central portion of the vehicle, ends back here and then splits underneath the rear seat. So if you can imagine this is about six foot long T-shaped battery cell. Uh, and it's composed of 288 individual prismatic cells that are all about the size of a 5x7 picture frame. And those all work as building blocks to compose this battery. Um, on a full charge, it'll take about 9 to 10 hours to fully charge the vehicle on a 120 volt outlet. And that's the system that comes with the car. Uh, many owners and places of businesses are, are definitely embracing the 240 volt outlet, which is an aftermarket installation. Um, and that'll actually decrease your charge times down only 4 hours. So it definitely uh, speeds up the process. Uh, on a full charge, you will go 25 to 50 miles using nothing but electricity. You will use not a single drop of gas. You will create no emissions whatsoever. Uh, another thing we like to talk about with the battery is people have concerns with a lithium ion battery pack, much like we have in our cell phones, or laptops, or even in the camera you're using right now. When we get them brand new, they perform great, but two, three, four years down the line, they don't perform exactly like they were when they were brand new. And that's because those devices get overcharged constantly. They're getting depleted down far too often. Um, so what we actually do with the battery here with the Volt is um, on a full charge, it's actually not above 80% capacity even. And when it's down to zero, we're down to about 20% of the, the battery's capacity. So what's nice is we have this nice median range the, the battery can't be overcharged and it can't be depleted all the way down so it gives it a nice long life that's why um, GM actually backs the, the warranty here with a, or the battery with an 8 year 100,000 mile warranty and that's all also includes the electric drive components and its cooling system the cooling system is also something we like to talk about here because um, uh, batteries in any device or vehicle perform differently on what kind of uh, temperature they're sitting in. So in extremely hot or extremely cold environments, the liquid thermal management system will actually heat up or cool the battery down, even when the vehicle's plugged in, to make it perform optimally in not so optimal conditions. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now we'll talk about, uh, we'll go into that range extended mode. Okay. And that's when we have depleted that 25 to 50 miles of all electric range, then we'll go into the range extended mode. liter inline four cylinder engine. In fact, it's the same engine that we're taking out of the Chevy Cruze, a vehicle that you're handing back over to us. Um, but in this configuration, it works a lot differently. Uh, this only creates 80 horsepower by itself, and it's really only working as a generator to store more energy into the battery to further electrically propel the vehicle. So on top of the 25 to 50 miles of all electric range, you're going to get about another 330 miles out of the range extended mode. Um, so we're looking, you know, 370 to 380 is a total range on a full charge and a full tank of gas for the Volt. Um, over here are your electric motors. Um, the electric motors themselves create 149 horsepower and 273 foot-pounds of torque. And what's great about that torque is it's virtually instant with an electric motor. So 0 to 60 times are under 9 seconds quarter mile times are under 17 seconds and top speed is 100 miles an hour. All that performance is achieved in either all electric or range extended mode. It doesn't matter. Uh, something to note with uh, the gas engine here as well, it does require 91 octane or better. So premium fuel, uh, it's required to get better fuel economy out of the vehicle. From here, we definitely like to talk about efficiency because that's what the Volt is all about. So let's talk about aerodynamics. First of all, we have this very rounded front fascia. The dual port grill is closed off, where in a normal car it would be open for more air. And we have this very pronounced front air dam down here. Okay, and something we like to discuss. 
discuss here is that yes, it sits very low to the ground for better aero, um, but you definitely want to be careful at, at uh, steep driveway aprons or parking blocks. Uh, it is very pliable and durable, so it can take some punishment, but just be cognizant of it when you're driving. Um, the Volt's devoid of any extraneous body cladding here. Uh, we do have an integrated rear spoiler as well, but you'd probably be amazed at this. The drag coefficient is 0.28 here. That's the same as a ZR1 Corvette. It's pretty remarkable the kind of aero we get out of this. Um, with all that aerodynamic work, uh, engineers estimate that they got another 8 miles in all electric range and another 50 miles in range extended mode just with the aerodynamic aids they've uh, put here on the car. Uh, something neat as well, the wheels are only about 17 and a half pounds each. That's 7 pounds lighter than a conventional aluminum wheel. So we get a lot of rotational mass off the vehicle and they are surrounded in ultra low rolling resistance tires from Goodyear. So we try to make this thing as efficient as possible and of course as slippery as a fish. Before we jump inside, we'll talk about the key fob. Very similar to what you would see uh, from a Chevy Cruze. In fact, just to say, I drive one myself. So they look very similar except for just a couple buttons. Um, here, you have your lock, unlock, and then of course we have to be able to remote start the vehicle. Especially in the summertime, we like to keep the cabin cool, so you can certainly do that. You just hit lock once, hold down the button below, and the vehicle will start to precondition. Um, you'll see the lights go solid here in the running lights as well as the tail lights. You'll know that um, you are either cooling or warming the cabin up depending on the temperature. Um, but something really important is we like to have the vehicle plugged in when we're doing um, climate control. That way we're pulling off the grid and not off the car's power. Uh, and in the case that uh, you do want a climate control, make sure the vehicle's out in the open because in extreme cases the gas engine can come on to help with uh, climate control and we would then be creating emissions. So to deactivate, you just hold that same button down and that is it. And also on the fob here, you can release the charge port door right here on the left front fender. And this is where we're gonna charge. This is really the last thing I cover, so we will come back to this. Sound good? Good. All right. So uh, from here, I would have you jump inside. We'll explain the menus that we're seeing and uh, tell you what to experience. All right, cool. So once we're inside the Volt here, um, this can be a little bit different of an experience for someone that's never been inside the car before because we have no needle light gauges whatsoever from a conventional car. It's completely replaced by two 7-inch LCD screens and we'll work our way completely through them. Um, but first and foremost, the key. There's nowhere to plug it in here in the car. It simply stays in the passenger compartment in your pocket in the center console. doesn't matter. Put your foot on the brake and just one touch of the power button and the Volt is up and running. Pretty cool. So, um, again, two 7-inch LCD screens, but we'll work left to right like we're reading a book that we know, we know exactly what we're looking at. First and foremost, let's start in the door. In the door here, conventional windows, exterior mirrors, and your child's safety lockouts as well. Further up into the door here, we have a release for the charge port door that's on the left front fender again. And then just up above that is the release for the fuel door, which is in the right rear quarter panel. Um, and we'll, we'll cover the, the charging system at the end as well. First and foremost, let's get up here into the dash. On the left side over here underneath this vent, there's a select back and config button. Um, and that's going to control all the menus that are down here in the first screen. Um, around the select button is a knob that you can actually twist to cycle through all the menus down here on the bottom. I hope you can see those okay. Um, something we do different with this vehicle than any other vehicle that we work on any other fleet is we zero out the trip odometer at ESI and then we do not zero it out when we get to our destination because we like to give you a live profile on the vehicle. So for instance, I've traveled 23 and a half miles here today. I've used not a single drop of gas and I'm averaging over 250 miles to the gallon and that's an equivalent obviously. On the left hand side here is our all electric range. We still have 12 miles of, of all electric range to go. And on the right hand side is our range extended mode. Now that's grayed out right now because that mode is not active. Um, I'll cycle through these menus here on the bottom. We have an A and B trip odometer, and I have them identical right now. It gives you your remaining oil life, a tire pressure monitoring system. Um, your vehicle messages will always deliver it with zero, but this would come up if you have uh, a tire pressure light or low fuel, or the oil would need to be changed, it will let you know there. You can change between miles and kilometers. 
and then you have this tutorial mode. In the tutorial mode over here, while you hit select while you're in it, it brings up a demo screen. And regardless of what kind of energy is left on the car, it's going to tell us what we're looking at. Again, all electric, range extended mode, and it gives you an estimated cumulative range down here in the lower left corner. If you hit config while you're over here, it brings up an alternate screen because this is a configurable display. On the right hand side, it's brought up this new efficiency gauge. And what this does is it has this green leaf ball, centralized right here, that you want to keep in the middle at all times if you can help it, because that's when the volt will be most efficient. If you start to accelerate too hard and aggressively, it goes up, gets smaller, and turns yellow. And if you're starting to brake too hard, it goes down and turns yellow. Now we want to really focus on the braking here because the volt uses a, regener a, eh, excuse me, a regenerative braking system much like we've seen in the uh, Tahoe or Escalade hybrid, when we actually coast off of the accelerator, um, we'll start to return incremental amounts of energy from the G-forces created by the wheels and return it back to the battery to give us a little bit better overall range. So it's advantageous as a driver of the Volt to start to anticipate your stops. Stop lights, stop signs. Instead of getting on the brakes late and aggressively, start to coast a little bit more and you'll only return more energy to the, to the car itself. It's great. Um, over here it's demonstrated that we've expelled our all-electric range that's gone to zero and turned gray and then the range extended mode has become color and takes over and that's when you see the, uh, the blue fuel gauge here if we hit back and hit config in the normal screen it brings up the efficiency gauge and puts the range extended mode in gray up above the battery so you have the option of either looking at the efficiency gauge or getting rid of it entirely so um, it's very straightforward here what you're looking at. Um, obviously your speedometer is right ahead and compass as well. The steering wheel is tilt and telescoping so you can customize it to your fit. Put it anywhere, anywhere you need it. The seat is also all manual adjustment. So on the left is our pump so we can bring our seat up, down. We have fore and aft as well. And then the recline's right up on the uh, side of the seat back right here. Um, uh, turn signals, headlights, on the left side stock, on the right side are our wipers. Right up here on the steering wheel, um, we have our radio controls, Bluetooth, you can mute the radio or hang up a phone call, and then cruise control over here, much like you'd probably seen in the cruise, very similar steering wheel. Uh, and then from there, we'll work our way over to the center stack and talk about this. Uh, the center stack is really neat because this is going to tell us about all the energy usage in the Volt. We combine both a, uh, a touch sensitive pad and a touch screen. The touch sensitive pad is precisely that, sensitive. So when you put on the volume, I'll turn this down, it is a sensitive touch. So for instance, just a nice gentle touch of the radio band will actually cycle through our AM, FM, XM bands. Or you can do it right on the touch screen. Tone control. So we can adjust our bass, mid-range, and our treble, your balance and fader, all like a normal car, all handled from the touchscreen. Navigation is standard on every single Volt, as is five years of OnStar service. Truly unprecedented. Incredible incentive for, for buyers. But when you're nav here, you can click destination. Your address entries are put up right here on the touchscreen, all manually. When we talk about efficiency, we have to talk about climate control. It's very, very important. When we're in climate control, we have several different modes to be more or less efficient and more or less comfortable for that for that matter. Um, right now, I've got it in comfort. This is like having a conventional HVAC system. You're going to have full fan speeds, full control over your temperature as well. It will limit you to nothing, truly. Um, your fan speeds are all controlled right here on the touch screen or on the touch sensitive pad and the temperature is controlled on the upper left portion here. But then you're going to see eco and fan only. In eco, we'll still give you heat or give you AC depending on what you need, but we're going to reduce a little bit to balance it against optimal fuel economy. So it's kind of a nice median range there and it will be more efficient. In fan only, we're using no heat, no AC, we're simply recirculating the cabin temperature. Um, and that's really the most efficient way to provide any HVAC use. Um, in these hot days, you may want to click it up to eco or comfort like I had it. Um, 
in the cold months, if you can spare HVAC entirely and simply use the heated seats, you will use significantly less energy uh, than using any kind of fan. Um, also, while we're up here, um, we can talk about the radio cache feature. So, for instance, um, if you just hit pause, it actually starts to cache up to 20 minutes of audio from what you're listening to on your AM, FM, or XM, so you can actually go back in time to listen to what you've missed or what you really liked. Um, so from there, that's really how I describe the uh, touch-sensitive pad. Then we'll talk about just the very few hard keys that are here in the Volt. Lock, unlock, and then you have these mysterious leaf and drive mode buttons here. We'll start with the leaf button. It's going to bring up a new screen here. And the leaf mode brings up a power flow chart. So if we were to start to make forward progress, it'll actually show energy path uh, coming from the battery up to the electric motor. If we go into regenerative braking, it'll show energy coming from the wheel back to the battery. And then once we go into uh, range extended mode, it'll show the gas engine right next to it here. So you're really never guessing as to how power is flowing through the vehicle. Also here, charging. We can set up custom charge modes here. Right now we have it set up so when you plug it in, it'll start charging immediately. But, just to demonstrate, you can actually de delay it based on your departure time or your electric rates. To save yourself even more money, think about it, a lot of communities, or depending on what your energy company uh, dictates, uh, energy could say be least expensive between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. So we could technically edit many of those features to save ourselves even more money. So let's say we get home at 6 p.m., we could plug the car in, put it on a, del uh, on a delayed charge because we know that energy is going to be less expensive. So when we plug it in, the vehicle now knows when to start charging to save you, as a user, even more money. Or on your departure time. Let's say we're on a 240 volt outlet, it takes four hours to charge. We need a full charge, so uh, we're going to leave at 7 a.m. You plug the car in at night, it'll start charging right around 3 a.m., so when you get in the car, you have a fresh charge. But what we will do for you, Eric, is we'll change the charge mode back to immediately, that way when you plug it in, it'll start charging. And we'll talk about energy info. This is really neat here too because from the last time this vehicle was fully charged it's traveled 23.7 miles, it's used not a single drop of gas, again averaging over 250 mpg, and this is the lifetime gauge here. This is not configurable by the user. This was from the time this Volt was built and started to the time it sits now. It's averaging almost 53 miles per gallon. And the efficiency tips here I just recommend reading these on your own time, but it's basically going to regurgitate much of what we've talked about here today. But it's just really neat to know that there's a car out there that tells you how to be more efficient with it. Um, in drive mode, it's going to change a menu right up here. The drive mode signifies there, there's three different drive modes for the Volt, either normal, sport, or mountain. Every time you get in the Volt and turn it on, it defaults to normal. It's the most efficient way to drive the car. It will not get better. If you go into Sport, Sport will actually recalibrate the accelerator pedal to be more sensitive to your foot input, give you a little bit more power, but it will use more energy. So keep in mind that Normal is still more efficient. Mountain mode is exactly for that. Mountainous or very hilly terrain, something we don't experience too much here in Michigan. But if we were out in, say, parts of California, Colorado, Pennsylvania, we're at very steep grades, we're going to be on for long periods of time, we like to have more energy to get up that, that hill. So what you can do is activate mountain mode, it'll activate the gas generator to start putting more energy into the battery to give us more power up those, those steep grades. Now, when it's in that mode, the gas engine can experience heightened RPMs, upwards of almost 5,000 RPMs, um, and when you do experience that in the car, and I hope that you do, um, know that the engine is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's not overacting, it's, uh, it's doing exactly what needs to put more energy into the battery. Um, but that's how I really describe the center stack and this gauge here. Um, but we also want to talk something really important here. You are one of the lucky ones to get an Android smartphone with your car. So what's cool is we have actually upfit it with the OnStar link. If you ever have any questions about a username or a password, just look right here on the back and you can put it in manually. Bear with me one sec.
password is demo car one. Once you click that in, it'll activate the OnStar link and then give us live profiles on the vehicle, much of what we've already seen here in these screens. This works off a 3G signal. And this is applicable to any Android smartphone or an Apple iPhone as well. Just give it a moment here to load up. Now we're going to get a live update from this vehicle here in a few moments. So it's going to tell us our all-electric range, our range extended mode, um, our tire pressure monitor as well. And we can cycle through all those menus. And we'll update these figures here in a matter of moments. But also what you can do, you can remotely unlock, lock the vehicle, remote start, uh, beep the horn, flash the lights. You can also set up custom charging times like we did here in this screen where we could delay the charge based on electric rates or your departure time. And you can also receive alerts, either text or via email. If power was disrupted while you're doing a charge um, or the vehicle becomes fully charged, it will tell you right here uh, on the phone. So here we are back again at the uh, original screens, giving us a live profile on the vehicle as it sits right now. Tire pressure monitor. Um, and a remote as well. Let's talk about charging. Very simple with the Volt. We're going to cover a couple of things back here first, though. Um, of course, this is a hatchback design, but what's really neat, too, the seats do fold completely flat. So it's a 40-40 split here in the rear, so if you had larger cargo items, certainly you can fit them in here, no problem. Dog. Oh, a very big bull mastiff could fit back here, no doubt. So back here we want to emphasize a couple different things. One, the Volt has no spare tire. It uses resealable tires. This is your tire inflator kit. This is something you see on a lot of high-performance cars that, that shed the spare tire to, to lose weight. This is your sealant kit and your compressor. This will plug into the power adapter. One side injects the sealant, the other side pumps up the tire. And this is your 120 volt charging system. So, basically, this will plug into any conventional three prong outlet. Um, if you can run a hair dryer and not blow a fuse or pop a circuit breaker, you can charge the volt. It draws very little power. Um, but we'll bring it up front here. Plug it in. It comes with 20 feet of cord. That is all you need. No extension cords should be used with it. We'll just release the charge port door. Hypothetically speaking, we had it plugged in very gently. It goes right in very easily. There's a light here right on the dash. It'll go amber for about 5 to 10 seconds. Then it will go solid green. The car will beep once and you'll know you're charging. If for any reason the amber light stays on, I would just recommend unplugging from the wall in the car and repeating the cycle. But there should be no issues. I've had no charging issues with the car whatsoever in the seven months I've been working with it. Um, if the light goes to a fast green pulse, that means you're on a delayed charge, which you can set up there again in the screen or from the phone. And if it goes to a slow green pulse, that means the vehicle is fully charged. Um, to release, pull this trigger and it comes right out. Very simple. Um, also at nighttime when you trigger this there's an LED light to give you a you know, better lighting when you're uh, going to insert this into the vehicle. Uh, other than that, this system, again nine to ten hours to fully charge. When you're done with it, simply tuck it right back in here. Bear with me a moment. charging process on the Volt. Very simple to do. Flip up your tailgate. Good to go. So I hope you like it. It's a great experience.